and welcome back to the Donahue Group. We're so glad that you could join us for another half hour of scintillating conversation about issues of importance, uh, at least locally and, and around the state. Uh, joining me today, former State Senator Cal Potter, also former Assistant Superintendent of Schools for uh, Library Services. Tom Paneski, still hard at work as a uh, professor of mathematics at the University mm -hmm. of Wisconsin Sheboygan, enjoying his summer, I hope. Ken Risto, he still has a job at the Sheboygan Area School District, so we're really <laughs> pleased about that. As of the taping. <laughs> at least as of the taping. Uh, director of uh, Social Studies for the district and a fine teacher. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a lawyer and uh, the host of this fine program. We're going to talk today about uh, issues in the city and in the county. It's been, as always, don't we live in an interesting place? but it's been an interesting time. I thought we would just start out with what I think is one of the gutsier moves of the Sheboygan Press in recent history, which was to publish, quite publicly, the salaries of about, what, 40 or 50,000 people? <laughs> it just seemed that way. Uh, your my salary was published? My salary was in there. My salary was in uh -huh. there. And uh, of course, Cal, you're in retirement, and you know, I just claw privately for whatever little bits and pieces <laughs> I can get here and there. So there's the one advantage to, to the private sector. Um, I forgot what you make. I think I remember what you make. So how do you feel about that? I canceled my subscription within 15 minutes. All right. I have no problem as a public servant having the taxpayers who are paying the freight um, know what the beginning salaries of teachers are and see the salary schedule, what we pay people, what the top of the schedule is. I have no problem with them finding out the range which we pay building principals and administrators. I have, I have no problem with them publishing Joe Sheehan's salary because he negotiates that one-on-one -on -one and there isn't a salary range. And uh, beyond that, you know, this is just the news, in my view, this is the Sheboygan Press trying to sell newspapers. And if you're that desperate to sell newspapers, you're obviously you know, a dying dinosaur in the, in the tar pit of history. And we'll wave goodbye to the Sheboygan Press in a couple of years because this is just a desperate act of a desperate institution. I think it's a dumb business decision. If you're trying to sell newspapers and you've got literally thousands of public employees who are now ticked off and who will cancel their, their subscription, uh, where do they expect to pick up those losses? They're not going to get it from people who say, oh, I'm, I love the Sheboygan Press now that they finally published these salaries. There's no constituency, I think, that they're going to gain out of this thing. So they're just going to promote ill will amongst a good segment of our public sector who are good, hardworking people and have them cancel and they're going to be sitting there with fewer and fewer uh, subscriptions. So I, I really don't see what their motivation was other than the real boneheaded de decision that this was somehow in the public good. You know, my react, they, one of the rationales they said was, well, these are people paid for by the people. The people don't have any choice. They have to pay through the taxes. Well, every time you turn on your light, you don't have any choice about Wisconsin Power and Light. Why don't you publish the oligopoly salaries of theirs or possibly Webco or Wisconsin Public Service when you, you heat your home? Uh, you want to see some salaries. Uh, some of these corporate salaries are, are six figures. You'll make the public employees blush as to what some of those folks get. But nobody talks about some of the other salaries we have to pay that we don't have any choice in. So I'm not so sure that this is the, the great public uh, service issue that they say it is. And most of the most of the salaries were higher than mine, so I was a little <laughs> <laughs> Well, I only worked 35 years, 36 years at the University of Wisconsin, Sheboygan, and the university system, it got touted as being very efficient, yeah. <laughs> so my salary was lower, and I saw another person who I, I know applied for a part-time job at the campus maybe three years ago. And now I saw her name uh, at LTC, and she was making maybe 4,000 less or 3,000 less than I was. I thought, oh, and I just have 37 years and she's got two, two, one. Ah. <laughs> I thought, oops, well, whatever. Well, now here's the That's worm it. that starts to crawl through the wood because I think your points are t well taken, your points are well taken, but I, for one, at least until I got kind of bored or just sick of following the lines, I with great interest read through some of those salaries. And I mean, it, and it is just that sort of human nature to want to know what other people are making. And sure. um, we haven't used the word oligarchy on this uh, show uh, before, and, uh, or the, the, um, 
the descriptor that you used, but uh, I think your point is well taken uh, as well. I'd pick a, a pick a fight with you, Ken, on the um, specific amounts. My my own feeling was is that people who are not in policy making positions, who are just everyday working people, probably deserve a little bit more privacy, quite frankly, than the press gave them, simply because they aren't policy makers. Once you start getting into a policy making position, whether you're a principal or the coordinator of an assessment curriculum developer of. Are you looking, are you searching for my title? Uh, yeah, I, I would, I could search for your title for a good long time and never <laughs> find it. It's a spe I'm the only specialist in the district. Ah, a specialist. I'm a special specialist. A specialist. Unique. Yeah, I thought that was just for insects, but in any mm -hmm. event, um, once you get into those kinds of positions, I, to be honest with you, I think it's fair game. I think that, and I, I have no problem with attaching a name to the position, but if it's a school secretary, for goodness sake, or a brand new teacher, or even a teacher who's been in the district for some period of time, I guess, to me, it is that sort of curiosity that does not bring out the best in all of us, you know, as I'm reading through and saying, aha, oh. Hmm. Yeah, just came across it. And of course, I looked at the highest salaries, and I went the top five or top three, LTC. And you, then you could think, okay, that's an appointed board. That's they, and they have taxing power, and they're not accountable. Is that going to be subject to change in the future? May or may not be. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what crossed my mind. But overall, it seems to have died. I mean, there hasn't I was surprised been any there ongoing. Wasn't a lot of, uh, people who make Walmart salaries writing back saying, "I don't make this." I. Yeah. covet them and I think they shouldn't make that. I, I, I think maybe the press thought that's what they would generate is a lot of letters to the editor, but it sure is indeed very quiet as a it, response. Yeah. So I don't know if it, uh, if it was uh, worthwhile or not. Yeah. And I, I hope it was accurate. You know, I, I know that uh, in many cases that some of the state newspapers have used to uh, do that with state employees and sometimes they would in some positions include benefits and in others not. And sometimes, you know, a cursory reading of these was not a fair comparison because the data they got sometimes indeed included benefits. And in the private sector, we generally don't um, talk about people's, you know, packages that they have, retirements and others, as part of the pay. We say they get so much per hour, their salary is so much. Yeah. Also, I thought that the years of experience was potentially misleading. Sure. Yeah. Um, sure. Because yes. uh, Chief Kirk has not been the police chief for 28 years. Um, mm -hmm. I was on the Police and Fire Commission when we hired him, and so it's less than a decade. And not certainly not to take away from the fact that he, and I'm going to presume he has 28 years experience in the, in the police department. But people just reading those things casually may have drawn conclusions that weren't, weren't uh, mm -hmm. substantiated, so. The district numbers were all over the board. I mean, they gave me credit uh, for three years of parochial school education, so I'm not sure we had a violation of separation of church and state there, but. <laughs> um, and, but on the other hand, one of my colleagues uh, didn't get recognition for the years she served in a different school district. And so there was some real variation. Uh, some administrators who worked their way through the ranks, more as luck like Kirk, um, their years were added in there even though they were only in those administrative posts for a couple of years and so on and so forth. So there was, uh, yeah, the, the years were, the numbers were fairly accurate from at least what I talked to people about. I didn't look at the list because I thought it'd be hypo it'd be really hypocritical of me to read the list after complaining about being there. But <laughs> I did get one telephone call from a concerned anonymous taxpayer. It seems that most anonymous, concerned taxpayers are anonymous, um, wanting to know why I was paid more than most teachers, and then I had explained that I have a, an 11-month contract as opposed to a 10-month contract. And, he thought that was reasonable, and I was so pleased that he thought that was reasonable. Yeah, <laughs> were you up front with him? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and that wasn't, of course, mentioned or that isn't discussed. And sort of administrators, some have 12 months, some That's have 11 right. months, and you've right. got all those kinds of variables as well. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Different responsibilities. Our elementary principals, some of them have responsibilities beyond their building, and then some of them don't. And so it's, it gets to be like an apples and oranges situation. And to its credit, I think the press did indicate that that there were were not clear that mm -hmm. the, the comparative information might be somewhat misleading from position to position and and so forth. But uh, that yeah, was fun. You keep the page. You sit down at dinner. 
Who's Tori? <laughs> they teach in the school system. Let's find them. Who's teaching at the UW? Let's find them. Except for Ken, <laughs> you know, who's purer than all of that. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I was... I was... Uh, but just by listening, I could figure it. I mean, yeah. people would tell me. Where just, I was. Sure, yeah. Yeah. just bless you. I yeah. think that's that is so principled. I'm 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 impressed. So, and the rest of us can fill you in because I have them all committed to memory. memory. By the way, I don't. By the way, just for the record, I don't make policy. Well, that's another argument. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. You wrote his opinions. <laughs> I, I share opinions which are usually ignored. <laughs> well, provide input. Just when you thought it was safe to take out construction bonds for the police station. <laughs> <laughs> that was just an interesting couple of weeks. Now, a lot of this happened when you, uh, Tom, were in Germany with the mayor. Are you suggesting a connection? <laughs> no. no, no oh, I, okay. don't oh, uh, I don't recall. Well, I mean, they didn't have a council meeting or anything. While well, that's true. That's true. I'm sorry. The, you think there's a connection there, too? Yeah. <laughs> You're not here. We don't have a council no, no, meeting. The mayor was there in Germany, and uh, oh, I don't okay. think they had a council meeting. But Tom and his spouse were on the, uh, the mayor's uh, uh, trip to Germany, Germany and Italy, and maybe we'll have a chance to talk about that a little bit. And I apologize. That did come right after you folks came back. And Alderman Boren, uh, newly elected, introduced a resolution um, to... Uh, set up a study committee relating to Act 40, which is a um, recently enacted legislative provision which lets municipalities, if they have contracted with a county law enforcement agency, to eliminate their police departments. So apparently in other parts of the state where there was some discussion about eliminating police departments, the conclusion was drawn that you couldn't do it. That statutorily, if you had a police department, you had to maintain a police department. So Act 40 is all about the business of how you can, in fact, if you contract for other services, uh, dismantle your police department. It was a very interesting time. I think time. Boren walked into it. He gets this surveyed and says, oh, pe people would like to see them combined or save money. And so he introduces the resolution and voila, the police department. Uh, gets on the phone, they talk to their, you know, supporters, uncles yeah, uncles and, aunts and, nephews. <laughs> uncles and aunts and signs appear in front of sure. City Hall and sure. probably calls go to Boren and all of a sudden the, the intent got changed and... Well, it was a close <laughs> vote, it was a close vote in the first place, eight to seven, uh, to establish the study committee, so it was not like it had overwhelming support to begin with, and uh, so I thought it was just very, very interesting how quickly that turned around it goes back to all concepts that we have talked about in our brief period of time on the air here about what, what do we really mean by shared services and can there be anything that is really systemic in terms of shared services as opposed to ad hoc, let's share this, let's do this, you know, what if we, let's get together on this particular, but an actual plan to rationally and clearly and efficiently run municipal government and what, what would Act 40 fit Kohler? S surely. Because they have a very tiny police department and maybe they could pass but, it on to the county or share services. That would seem like it might fit Kohler, a small community. Well, we have, if you'll remember, we have um, a, a strong police force in the city of Sheboygan Falls, in the city of Plymouth, and then the village of Kohler does have its and own Elkhart department. Lake, is there and Elkhart yeah, Lake. Lake. Yes. Yeah. Any other? I don't. I think all the other municipalities either just depend on sheriff services or there are some townships um, that actually contract with the sheriff's department for additional services. The village of Oostburg does that, the town of Sheboygan, uh, the village of Random Lake. Um, Cascade, I believe. Most, I think probably yeah. Waldo. So they get yeah. extra protection yeah. and they, mm -hmm. they pay for that. But eliminating institutions that are either beloved or sometimes not so beloved in a community is, is, is a big deal. I think the study committee was, would not have necessarily proposed that, but uh, it was interesting just how it all played out. Then the day after, we're back to the North 23rd Street site. For those of us who thought the City Hall site was puzzling at best, um, it Chief, was just, Chief, Chief Kirk has extra status. The community rallied around him. I would like the 23rd Street. But they didn't like it before. Yeah, I mean <laughs> they was, didn't like it before. And of course now Vandervart is back on the uh, on the uh, 
on the page with uh, perhaps a more economical proposal. What do you think? I think timing we just is going to be a major factor here. I, I think what has happened is that people are analyzing that downtown site is not being the ideal for a, a police department. If yeah. you want a firing range or you want cooperative uh, operations with the sheriff's department at some time, if it's garage facilities or whatever, there's no room down there. You no, hardly can, I know. You hardly can build a city hall in that site, know, let alone yeah, add on to right, it. So I think it's a, it's a bad site, a bad choice initially. But now to reopen the issue, I don't know what the, the Vandervaart site would require as far as environmental uh, surveys. You know, that's been a construction site for many years. And sometimes you need uh, feasibility studies, which take months sometimes. So I don't know if it's going to happen to, to broaden it beyond 23rd. Maybe the chief's idea was, well, 23rd Street has been looked at better than any other site. Yeah, and if I don't want downtown, this is the quickest show in town to get my police station built. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the uh, North 23rd site certainly came in first in terms of all the criteria that were set out in terms of the best location. And um, it's interesting stuff. I, I just, is the, I think the council is taking a bad rap for making, for looking at a, kind of reopening the issue. Let's decide it, you know, all over again. Um, well, Bob Latree, I think, spoke at the council or the committee of the whole or the council meeting and said, first it was Sheridan, then we got some new public officials, then we rescinded Sheridan, then we had this study, we had so many, then we decided to vote down 23rd Street, then we voted down <laughs> uh, Vandervaart, and then we voted the city hall site. Now we're turning away from that again and going back to 23rd Street. Where is where are we? You know, you vote down one and then you don't vote it down. Your well, we've had a change in the, in the city council, so there are people yeah. who yeah. Uh, probably want their kick at the cat. They, yeah. They've got yeah. strong views and it's a yeah. new day. I, Shared I services think it makes would sense. have worked well with yeah. the, uh, that city county committee, that county, that committee that was going to study shared services working with uh, uh, the 23rd Street site. Maybe they could have done something there, but. Maybe they still can. Yeah. Well, I, it, and I don't know, but it, it, I, my sense is that the county would still be certainly willing to, to work with the city, and it certainly seems to have a whole lot to recommend it. And I, I remember at least that lots and lots of people, including the mayor and some of the council people, were just surprised at the vote on the city hall site because it was certainly not ranked very high. It has all sorts of issues, as we've just talked about. And um, uh, so although it does appear to look like the council is dilly-dallying and can't make up its mind, I think it, from my perspective, as far as this goes with this important issue, it really makes sense. And then there's the question of the cost, um, uh, costs of between 14 and $17 million have been floated for that new police station. One of the advantages to the city hall site, I think just because it would have had to have been so small is you'd keep it more in the seven to $8 million range, which I think is, frankly, I'm not even sure the city can afford that, but I think it needs to find the money for that. But the cost of the station, I think, is going to be the next huge problem. You get the, you get the, the site and you pay for the site and what's left to build. So then there's going to be renovation of City Hall because mm -hmm. if they go out to North 23rd, they'll obviously want to renovate City Hall because other mm -hmm. offices want to expand. The planning department will probably want to move back in. And the city you attorney's have space office behind it, where the police garage was. So. Yeah, so there's yeah. going to be there's going to be renovation costs there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So they need a little bigger plan instead of just. And I don't know about you. That's the correct. police department. That's absolutely correct. But you work at, walk into City Hall. It's not a pleasant building. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't scream out gemuk, gemuk, gemuk. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't scream out welcome. <laughs> yes, yes. Bienvenuto. Uh, so I, uh, I'm all for spending at least a little bit of money in terms of, of, of renovating, or not renovating, but just cheering up uh, City Hall at least, uh, at least a little bit. And um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. I think. Uh, I think you're right. The price thing is going to be a major, yeah, it's going to be a major big. stumbling block. You and suppose they'll want to go to referendum? 
I don't know, unless they change this. You could do it in September. Weren't they looking at uh, naming rights for study facilities? Maybe yeah. We, maybe we could yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> name the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> I see as we sit out here now, the Acuity IT Center is beginning out here. Uh, yes, it and, is. Uh, I think a gorgeous tree came down, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, it's an exciting building. Yeah, it's a it's very be, wonderful... It's going to be nice. It's, in a year, it's supposed to be up and operating, so we're looking forward to it. Yeah. The library is coming over from the, uh, its current location, and that'll be part of the facility, plus more computer rooms. Uh, and uh, we have this compressed video. These are these uh, video kinds of classes between the sites, and so there'll be more of those, so we can host those. And that, that will enable us to bring more education courses into the, mm -hmm. into the campus. So that's going to be nice. What are they going to do with the existing library that time? And that's going to be remodeled, too. And I, I haven't looked at the plans, but some of it will be classrooms. Some of it will be conference, uh, okay. conference rooms, because we are getting short on conference rooms. And maybe part of it will be uh, used by the students also. Mm -hmm. They need space also. Okay. So. Not wanting to forget about the students. Students who uh, yeah. pay the bill. There you go. <laughs> they pay the bill. At least That's part right. of it. Yeah. But it, it'll be a very neat building, and Acuity was very generous. Um, well, Tom, wasn't there some suggestion or some talk on the floor of the council of exploring the issue of naming rights? Wasn't Mark Hanna starting, you know, yeah. he yeah. put it in place yeah. over in, in the Sheboygan Area School District, yeah. and... Uh, Big time. I was, yeah, no, I thought there was some effort. I think he was discussing, yeah, I mean, wasn't for, he? For, for companies, for, yeah, to, for, for companies name to name certain types of public, yeah. uh, public. And areas. it's one thing to, you know, have a gym named after you, but a police station. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm holding my tongue because <laughs> I thought maybe we could name it the Move the Police. <laughs> Now we're going to get kicked off. <laughs> now we're going to get kicked this off. This is the end of the show. <laughs> Great potential. <laughs> All right, you two. <laughs> you two just stop it right now. Yeah, I was thinking along those lines, too. Right? The three of you. Yeah, here we go. Here that we go. had never even occurred Heard to me. Yeah. I can just feel myself getting red, just even just considering it. Ice cream truck so we could have a... The bullhorn in the top. Uh, <laughs> all right, enough. I'm just thinking enough. Enough. Names are often after over <laughs> in the public library. <laughs> Dear listeners, as you can see, no control <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> all right, um, moving right along. One of the interesting pieces of the public session, public comment session during the Act 40 um, discussion at City Hall was Dulce Johnson's fairly impassioned uh, uh, speech presentation about residency and how um, surprisingly the the fairly large number of city workers, police, and firefighters who live outside of the community. I know that there are certainly two sides of the story uh, in terms of whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, Dulcie was charged up when she made the speech. I thought it was quite articulate. What are your thoughts? Well, she lost. She was on the council when we voted to adopt the, drop the residency requirement except for department heads. I. Uh, I had lost twice at it, bringing it to the council, and the third time, uh, Terry and I, Terry Van Acker was on the council, we agreed that certain people who make decisions have to live in the city. So that's police chief, fire chief, uh, director of public works, the planning director. Yeah. They make decisions affecting the city, so we don't want conflicts of interest if they're living outside the city making decisions to affect the city. And then we said anybody else could live where they want. And the reason we adopted that uh, em employees had relatives who lived in the towns, maybe a mother who lived in the town. All of a sudden, they would like to live there next to their mother, but then they would have to give up their job at the city. So they would rent a, a fake room saying, this is my residence in the city, and then go live in the town with their family and friend, uh, you know, relatives. And we were, it was just causing all kinds of conflicts. Besides, the other argument is you have an opportunity, these people are living around the area, and you could hire them. They're good people, and they would like to work for the city, but they live in the town. They are not going to move to work for the, you know, they have the skills to work. Mm -hmm. So they won't move into the city to work, but if they could work for the city and live where they were, be glad to do it. So, so there had been a residency requirement, yes. and there was a vote yes. then to eliminate it. To eliminate it. Okay. Yes, because I remember friends of mine doing exactly that. Worked for the city uh, in some capacity, and they were actually had a fake address. They're playing that game. Playing that game. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's not. You don't need to play that game. Yeah. yeah. They're maintaining a res. What it looked like a residency. 
Yeah, I always feel that because I'm an employee of the uh, Sheboygan Area School District, I should be living in the district. Um, I'm not sure I want to make that public policy. I know that in Milwaukee, they did just got done with a study, from guys out at Lakeland and some other folks, Mark Shug and uh, uh, an economics professor, just did a study and um, MPS is really hurt by the residency requirement in trying to maintain and find teachers to stay in the Milwaukee public school system. Um, they say that lots of people a good number of people, that's the deciding factor about whether they want to work at MPS or not in the, in the research that they did. I had a chance the to law, read it. The law has always been debated in the legislature as to whether mm -hmm. it ought to be repealed, allowing municipalities oh. and school districts to have it. And the vote was always close, and it was always it prevailed that municipalities still could. But Milwaukee was always the, the driver in this whole issue, and it was oh, yeah. basically white flight. Mm -hmm. um, whether right. uh, you're left with all your white teachers or your white police officers living in River Hills or wherever it is in the suburbs, and is that a good sign to make the city blacker than it is? And But generally the, the trend has been away from residency because spouses are involved, right. especially in school districts. There are two teachers, so one, they live in one district, the other one <laughs> needs to find a job in that district, and if they can't, they don't use the professional skills. Um, so I think the general feeling is that more rational viewpoint on this is, all right, if you want your police and fire available, say they have to live within 20 minutes or whatever response time you need for them to get to an emergency and not uh, simply be where they live. Um, let them be hired under skills and let them be available, but give them the choice of where they want to live. Right. Yeah, it is, I mean, there are certainly balancing issues uh, and considerations on both sides of it, but I think just the enforceability of it is very tough and uh, makes city officials spend a lot of time on things that could be spent in better pursuit than where somebody's living or if the apartment is is just a, a fake address or, or whatever. So, well, I don't think there's any move on the part of this council to change the residency requirements. So I think, although, as I said, I, I thought that it was just very interesting. It does show that I think the growth of towns around the area, uh, I mean, Sheboygan has city issues like any other city suburban kind of split in terms of where is it good to live and what can we do in the city to make things more attractive. We're running out of time. I just wanted to pitch to you folks and to anyone who's listening that the Lao Mung American Veterans Memorial is almost up and running, scheduled for its grand dedication on July 15th. It certainly has been going on for a long time and I've been somewhat involved in it. and. Uh, it's a, beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful design. Ray Hernandez, the dean at UW Sheboygan, uh, was one of the prime designers along with Steve Yeager at, uh, at Bray Associates. And it's just been a really nice effort on the part of the community. Governor Doyle is going to be here uh, as part of the dedication ceremonies, or so we've been told. And the President of the United States has been invited. So who knows what will happen? <laughs> July 15th, 12 noon at Deland Park. Thanks. It's been a nice time.